All right. Welcome to the Is It Me podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne. And uh, I seen this um story come out a little while ago. It was about Shia LaBeouf and a, a artist named FKA Twigs. I'm not too familiar with her work. I'm familiar with Shia LaBeouf through like music and stuff like that. But at first glance, when you're looking at these two, I wouldn't call it an odd couple because I looked up the age. She looked at way younger than him. You know, I would say for her age, she's keeping herself up very well. Um, I thought she was like in her like mid to early twenties. You know, that would have that would have explained how she was able to be, you know, coerced, I guess, into a relationship that it seemed like she didn't want from the beginning because she did an interview with Gail King and she was talking about how he was doing all these, you know, kind gestures to her, you know, the, the regular stuff we do to get women, you know, the, the being nice to them, not to say you should be nice to everybody, but you know, when you like somebody, you, you're being extra nice to them, you, you know, you're, being thoughtful about them all the time, flowers, candy, poems. You know, she said he was giving her books. And basically, he was just showing his interest in her. Now, from the outside looking in, you know, I would think that, you know, any woman would be like, wow, you know, this this guy is so into me. Um can I, should I give him a chance or whatnot? But from what it sounded like, she's making it seem like he pressured her into being a relation, into a relationship with him. Which, you know, that, that that's not cool. She, she kind of like turned it around to say he was doing all these nice things, but he had all these bad intentions. I don't think that was necessarily true, you know, because for the simple fact is majority of relationships start off on on good notes you know stuff may turn bad a few years into it stuff may turn bad into it you know a few weeks or months into it that's up to you know the pe- the part both parties involved to you know that's why you're supposed to date you know test people out feel people out if you at that age when you when you're 30 some odd years old or your late 20s you're supposed to have enough experience by then to, you know, feel somebody, to be able to feel somebody out, to be like, hey, I don't think this person is for me. I'm just going to step away while it's still fresh so there's no, like, feelings involved and, and, and things of that nature. But for her to, you know, to, she was ba- like, watch the interview. that She was basically making it seem like, Oh, he, you know, somebody's giving me flowers. That's being like basically saying that's being toxic or something like that. She was saying, oh, he was jumping over to my trailer and giving me these gifts. She was like, oh, that was just crossing the line and whatnot. If that's the case, think about Romeo and Juliet. That's the most toxic, you know, not forget about the ending, but all the gestures, you know, Romeo was doing towards Juliet, the singing and all that, the wooing of, of the woman. She's claiming that that stuff is toxic. I mean, like at first glance, I don't want to judge people on their looks, but you know, it's it's that's the world we live in. At first glance, when you look at the couple, you know, she's, you know, she if if they were average people, you would just say that she he's she he, she's just out of his league, basically, is what you would think. Now, was him being a you know quote unquote movie star one of the you know factors in her, you know, ex- getting into the relationship with him? Probably. We don't know. You know, people that have, you know, good jobs or lots of money or some type of power that, you know, women are attracted to that. There's no, you know, denying that. It's it's the same thing in high school. You know, the majority of the girls want the same, you know, five or six guys, you know, they want the star football players, basketball players. They're putting, you know, they want the AC Slaters of the world, the, the Zach Morrises of the world. You know, that's just how it is. You know, as, as, as odd as it may seem, 
you know, she seems like she would have been better off in life just getting an average guy that was into her, that could love her the right way. Not some superstar that he, you know, he really doesn't need you. So when he gets you, once he conquers you, what incentive is he going to have to treat you right? Because he can go get, you know, 10, 12, you know, women, you know, just like you, even though everybody is unique in their own way. But his options are, you know, massive. And I think she was a she she was being a bit naive in that aspect of like relationships. And then also I probably should have watched the the movie. They did a movie together. The movie was based on his life. Now, if he was being truthful about his life, you know, I'm pretty sure she probably read the script and saying that, hey, this guy's been through some stuff. This probably isn't the person I need to be in some type of relationship with. And from the stuff she was saying, you know, me being from the, you know, I'm not going to say hood or whatnot, but I've seen toxic relationships. I've been seen abusive relationships. I've been involved in them myself. You know, I've, I've been stalked and all this other stuff. It's not cool. It's not fun. You know, the stuff she was saying, you know, I've seen, what I need to quit doing is um, comparing it to like my experience because my experience probably wasn't the norm. You know, I've seen, you know, you know, firsthand, you know, when I was younger, women in my family, you know, getting, you know, knocked out, you know, you know, like abuse, abuse type of stuff. You know, things we have to call the police from what I've I don't think she's ever like I don't think he's ever done anything to the point where she said, oh, I just had to call the police and, you know, get him locked up. She's basically going on this. Uh, She's going on this tour of, uh, you know, I guess defaming him or whatnot. Some people, when they get in relationships, the 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 celebrities and stuff, they make you know women sign women and men sign contracts saying, hey, if this doesn't end well, you can't badmouth me and say this, that, and the third. But the stuff she was saying about the guy, you know, he he accepted. I'm not gonna say he accepted responsibility, but he acknowledged being a shitty person. You know, he acknowledged, you know, the, the verbal abuse, which a lot of people don't, you know, think about that. The verbal abuse probably, you know, hurts more than anything, you know, physical, because that verbal abuse is going to stick with her for years. You know, he was basically just being a, he was just basically being like some type of psychotic asshole. I, I don't get it. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to say just, hey, why didn't she just leave or whatnot? You know, maybe she did fall, you know, fall in love with him. It's hard to leave people that you're in love with, that you're attached to, you know. And it seemed like she was going out of her way to please him. She was saying things like, oh, he would make me, you know, kiss him or hug him 20 times a day or something like that. She said he would complain about her not showing him any affection so right off the bat, if that's true, it's obvious to do. He, he's got issues and no woman in the world is going to be able to, it's, it's not going to, no woman in the world is going to be able to um, help him patch or mend these, um, these demons he have that's popping up from the past. Like, I don't know if, I don't know if it's drugs. I don't know if it's just, you know, mental instability, but, you know, I'm glad she got out of it. Um, I'm I'm not a fan of people going to the media or, you know, the things like this. You should tell like your close friends and family and stuff like that. Even if you are famous, like I don't think you should like go do interviews like bashing people, because truth be told, if he did something so extreme like an R. Kelly situation, I can see those women. Like doing interviews, like saying, "Hey, this, that, and the third was going." You know, it was illegal things happening, like people being um, not not held against their will, but coerced into, you know, you know, doing things by somebody who's, who's had so much power over them and money. You know, you shouldn't use money to um, bend people to your will. You know, that's just a even though that's truth be told, that's the world we live in. You know. People to say, oh, hey, I want to grow up and be this, and that. I want to, I want to grow up and be a famous singer, or I, I want to be a famous, you know, basketball player, or something like that. Especially men, what they're really saying is, 
I want to grow up and have a lot of money and so I can have all these, you know, people admiring me so I can get a lot of, you want the money so you can get the women. That's, I'm just keeping it real. You know, people want a lot of money so they can, like specifically men, we want a lot of money so we can have, you know, more options to, to, to get women. Because all having money does is put men on an even playing field with women. Women turn men down, you know, every day. You know, when when your significant other, when she goes to the gas station, more than likely, that's probably she's probably going to run into somebody that's you know going to hold the door open for her. Not to say that that's flirting, but somebody's going to you know say, "Hey, can I pump your gas?" Face somebody's going to cut it to her. No, that's that's just how it is. A man can go, you know. <laughs> years without a woman approaching him, even if he's a you know a handsome guy, a man can go years without the, without a woman you know approaching him in public and stuff like that, you know because women want to be pursued, which is why I had an issue with with how she phrased him, you know, getting her the gifts and stuff in the beginning of a relationship because she she tried to make it seem like. If 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 she was tur- if she was so turned off by that, you know they would have never ended up hooking up and being together. But uh, I hope she works everything out, you know, in life, and I hope he gets the help that he needs because, you know, it's obvious he's he's got he's got demons that he's not expressing out into public, and that's fine. You know, stuff happens to people when they're younger, and they just you know it's not for everybody to know. But he does need to reach out to somebody to to get help with it, and uh, yeah, so that's that's gonna be a short podcast. That's the that's pretty much all all I have to say about this. Now, hopefully, she can find some type of closure. I think that's why she's going on the uh, interview tours. Uh, she she seems to be searching for closure. I hope she can find it. I really hope she doesn't jump into you know some other random relationship thinking that that's gonna help things. Cause that's probably just gonna make stuff worse. She should probably take, you know, some time off of dating and, you know, find herself and then really think about the type of guy that she would want to be with and, you know, vet him out for a nice while before you just give your all to somebody. But, yeah, that's uh, that's the end of this podcast. Uh, thanks to everybody for checking me out. If you could uh, like and subscribe on my YouTube, it's the It's It's Me is it me? It's going to be I S I T M E E on YouTube. And then you can search the same thing for uh, several podcasts out there and, uh, you know, subscribe and drop the uh, like and a comment if you want to. Thanks. Peace out.